Coming up this morning on DITV, we take you inside the First Generation Summit. Learn how UI students and staff came together to help improve first-gen students' college experience. And later, Vice President Mike Pence paid a visit to Iowa. Here are his comments on recent flood damage coming up. Tyler Cook is hanging up the black and gold. How will the Hawks replace him? I'll tell you more in sports. And the drought is no more. Find out more about that in my weather segment. All that and more coming up on this Monday morning edition of DITV. Don't go anywhere. DITV starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in to this live Monday, April 15th edition of DITV. I'm Noah Gowdy. Over the weekend, a first generation student summit was held at the IMU to bring together the community of students and staff at the University of Iowa to continue improving the college experience for first generation students. DITV reporter Maggie Minders has more. This past Saturday, University of Iowa students put on the first generation student summit to help raise awareness for the issues that such students are struggling with during their college experience and to help build the community between staff and students. I sat down with Donovan Livingston, one of two keynote speakers at the summit, and two first-generation students, Lisbeth Don Diego Moreno and Nicole Tay. Livingston is a poet, educator, and speaker who focused his speech on the encouragement of students and educators and the potential to change the shape of education. So tomorrow um, is, is going to be more broadly about some of the nationwide issues um, that affect uh, first-gen students, but after going over some broad statistics, I definitely want to talk more specifically about what students here can do to put pressure on policymakers and to hold themselves accountable for the ways in which we make this space more open and equitable for students who identify as first generation. Another keynote speaker, Dr. Yolanda Norman, also spoke about her college experience as a first generation student and how it has shaped her life. First generation student Nicole Tay said that she is motivated by the lessons that her parents taught her and those lessons push her to finish her degree. She also stated that the first generation event allows students to meet other people just like one another and she has learned how to be proud of her student status and how to not lose her identity. That's all from me, Maggie Minders, DITV News. After opening a presidential exploratory committee back in January, Pete Buttigieg, current mayor of South Bend, Indiana, officially launched his presidential campaign on Sunday. When something is grotesque, it's hard to look away. And the horror show in Washington is mesmerizing. It's all consuming. <laughs> but starting today, we're going to change the channel. My name is Pete Buttigieg. They call me Mayor Pete. I'm a proud son of South Bend, Indiana, and I am running for president of the United States. While speaking, Mayor Buttigieg focused on the current state of America. Buttigieg also covered many other political issues, including the situation at the southern border. We are here to say that there is a lot more to safety and security than putting up a wall from sea to shining sea. To those in charge of our border policy, I want to make this clear. The greatest nation in the world should have nothing to fear from children fleeing violence. And even more importantly... Even more importantly, children fleeing violence ought to have nothing to fear from the greatest country in the world. Over the weekend, Vice President Mike Pence visited Iowa to view the damage caused by recent flooding. After a helicopter tour with Governor Kim Reynolds, Pence traveled to Pacific Junction and met up with farm operator Den Dennis Lincoln to discuss concerns over damaged fields and buildings. I would say to each and every one of you, you know, Iowa is an important place every time there's a presidential election coming up. <laughs> There'd be plenty of time for politics when 2020 comes around. Right now, Iowa needs disaster assistance and it's time for Congress to act. With floods happening all over Iowa, the rain doesn't seem to be stopping. We have Dylan in the weather studio to tell us all about it. Dylan? Indeed, Noah, yes, we have some rain later in the week. But this morning, we have sunny skies and a temperature of 33 degrees in Iowa City. 
As we move on to tonight, our skies get a little bit cloudier, but our temperature raises up. We have a temperature of 51 degrees this evening and perfectly cloudy skies with no rain. Now as we move into the extended forecast for the week, as I mentioned today, our high gets up to 58 degrees and a low of 48. Tomorrow we have a 10% chance of showers with partly cloudy skies and our warmest temperatures of the week with a high of 73 degrees and a low in the mid 50s. Wednesday we have an 80% chance of thunderstorms in the morning with our high getting up to 72 and a low in the low 50s. Thursday that rain comes as you mentioned Noah. We have a 100% chance of showers all throughout the day with our high getting up to 55 degrees and a low in the low 40s. Finally on Friday the rains keep coming. We have more rain on Friday with winds up to 21 miles per hour and a high again at 55 and a low at 39 degrees. Now as we see that rain forecast, you can tell it's been one of the wetter seasons. As you can see in this graph here, that red mark shows that we were in a drought back in 2012. And the green mark way over there shows that drought has decreased. Now this is due to the wettest season of the last six months that we've had in the last century. This was the drought monitor back in September 25th of 2012. And you can see that extreme drought right there in the heart of the Midwest and all around the country. Now as we move into 2019, you can see all that drought has gone away. There is no more drought, least amount of drought in over 19 years. Now that's due to the wettest six months that we've had in a while. Now what's that mean for Iowa? Well, Iowa is actually the only state in the U.S. that's bordered by two rivers on either side. And you can see right there in the Mississippi River, there are major flood warnings right by Muscatine, Burlington, and areas of the Quad Cities. So if you live there, watch out because we've had a wet season and more rain to come. Noah, back to you. Thanks, Dylan. A University of Iowa PhD student is conducting research to try to better understand visual impairments and how to treat them. Brittany Williams is currently in the neuro Neuroscience Interdisciplinary Graduate Program, is conducting her studies under the supervision of UI assistant Dean Amy Lee. Williams' research is focused on protein in the eye that helps, the, that helps with sending the brain visual information. The findings of the study have helped the team better understand how visual impairments occur and grow. Lee has been very impressed by Williams' work so far, stating, quote, I'm confident that whatever she does, there's going to be some important science that is going to come out of her lab. She's really going to be an outstanding role model and really motivate underrepresented minorities to follow in her footsteps, end quote. Williams is proud of how far her studies have come so far and plans to continue working in hopes of helping the many who suffer from visual impairments. JCPenney's hosted their annual suit up event last night in Coralville from 6 to 10 p.m. The event offered students the opportunity to build a professional wardrobe without having to break the bank. Business attire such as suits, dresses, and shoes were discounted up to 40% off for any student who presented their university ID. The store even offered sizing for students to help them find the right fit. The event organizers provided a shuttle bus to and from campus that picked students up from the Iowa Memorial Union. And we have a lot of big news happening over in sports. Let's toss it to John in the sports studio to find out more. John? Yeah, that's right. On Friday, Tyler Cook made it official and announced he would hire an agent and enter into the NBA draft. With more, we have men's basketball reporter Declan Levy standing by live in the newsroom. Good morning, Declan. Good morning, John. How are you? Doing well, Declan. So where do you think Tyler Cook is going to be playing basketball next year? Yeah, I do not think Cook is actually going to hear his name in the NBA draft. I do, have, however, think that he can play in Europe. Look at former Hawkeye Aaron White. He's made himself a nice career over there. It's a lot better playing over there than trying to make your way through the G League. Now, Tyler Cook led Iowa in scoring and rebounding this year. How is Iowa going to replace his productivity? Yeah, that will be a miss for sure. But you got to look at guys like Cordell Pemsel and Jack Nungy. Nungy is coming off his redshirt year. And after the Tennessee loss, head coach Fran McCaffrey said he is playing the best basketball of his career. He's been in the gym with the assistant coaches, working on that ball handling, and I think he could make a huge difference as he's packed on some pounds and some muscle. Yeah, the Hawkeyes certainly have the pieces to replace Cook. Once again, that was Declan Levy live in the newsroom. Thank you. Now, Cook has to wait for a couple months for the NBA draft, but the NFL draft is just next week. And today, we're continuing our draft previews with defensive lineman Sam Brinks. Frank started all 13 games for Iowa this year and was one of the most consistent forces on the D-line. He doesn't have the strongest stats, which is why he needed a good performance at Pro Day. And unfortunately, an injury in the 40-yard dash prevented that from happening. Not great. Um, I pulled my groin on my first 40 attempt, so that was pretty frustrating. Um, but, you know, other than that, I tried to tough out, you know, the rest of the drills um, and, you know, just 
you know, show that I'm persistent and, and, you know, I'll give it everything I have. You know, you work for the last couple months, you know, to, to perform well on this day and, and when it doesn't go your way exactly, it's kind of frustrating, but, um, you know, just, just try to tough it out. And Brinks definitely toughed it out. Despite the groin injury in his first event, he finished out all the tests on Pro Day, and now it's just time to wait and see for the draft and free agency. It's kind of wait and see. Um, you know, you kind of wait and see how the draft goes um, and how free agency goes after that. Um, and and if, if an opportunity comes up, you know, I'll be happy to take it. If not, uh, you know, I'm going to move forward with my life. With his groin injury, plus not having the statistics to back him up, Brink's best chance at getting to the NFL will come in free agency. But as he said there, if it works out, he'll take the opportunity, and if it doesn't, he'll just continue to live his life. Now moving off of dry land, the Iowa rowing team hosted Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Indiana at Lake McBride for the Big Ten Double Duel for the first team's home event in three years. The first season with an upset victory over the Badgers by seven seconds. However, they would eventually lose to the Gophers later on by only a boat length. But with the support of the Hawkeye fans, Iowa was able to win the one varsity eight twice. Iowa defeated the Badgers on that second go around by five seconds and secured the fastest time on the lake with just a shade over seven minutes and one second. I think we had a lot of confidence going into it, but it's exciting to um, get in there and get a win. And I, a lot of respect for the other teams too. They both had really good races today, but I think we had really effective moves and um, our coxswain made really effective calls. And yeah, it was a good day overall. We have quite a bit of maturity uh, on our team. And um, along with that maturity comes a lot of sort of hand-me-down knowledge. So our, our group is really good at kind of managing themselves. And a lot of the groundwork I did in the, my first couple of years here to establish norms of self-management and so on and now we have a lot of the, the older uh, women on the team working with the younger women and bringing them into the fold and understanding how to do this. Always remember how effective our moves were today because if we go in with that same amount of like confidence in our plan, I think that you know, no matter if we're going up against Washington or anything like that, we can still make them never want to race us again because we're constantly on the attack with those moves and they, they work really well. Iowa will go back on the road as they travel to Providence, Rhode Island to take on Harvard and Brown next week. But that will wrap things up for me in the sports studio. Come back tomorrow for a closer look at that first rowing event for the first time in 1,099 days. Noah, take it away. New research shows that farmers are being injured at a higher rate than other occupations, even though they only make up about 2% of the population. Efforts to reduce the number of injuries have started at the University of Iowa and around the country. The UI is tackling this problem by offering a class on agricultural safety and education for its students. The course is one week long and includes tours of local farms and guest lecturers from, from experts. UI Associate Professor Diane Rollman says the course will engage students in real life situations like being trapped in a confined space or being buried in a grain bin. After receiving some social media attention, a Wisconsin animal shelter has gotten support from across the country. After a lost dog had been found on the street, Wisconsin resident Tegan Griffith decided to post her journey on the Twitter as she looked for, some, for the puppy's home. She later discovered that the puppy, which, which she named Larry, was part of a litter that belonged to the Forest, Co Forest Company Humane Society. Griffith decided to post a link to the shelter's donation page on her Twitter, hoping to generate a few extra dollars for the cause. After a few days, over $13,000 in donations had came in, with Griffith's tweet receiving more than 200,000 likes. Forest Company Humane Society has expressed their gratitude towards everyone who donated and vows to use the funds to continue helping animals in their society. And that's all we have for you here on this Monday morning edition of DITV. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all your latest news between Monday and Friday. If that isn't enough of the Daily Iowan for you, be sure to check out our print edition of the news on Stands Now. For DITV, I'm Noah Gowdy. Have a great day, Iowa City.